is a review of Wes Anderson's new movie called Isle of Dogs. Now, normally, I dread dog movies. I think dog movies are usually an excuse to just wallow in the most emotional, sappy kind of mind frame you can get. It's just too easy a topic to kind of manipulate audiences into all sorts of extreme emotions of happiness or sadness, something like that. Luckily, I can say that Isle of Dogs does none of that. It falls into none of those traps. Wes Anderson's movie is... It's smart, it's funny, it's inventive. It really is a delight and as far away from Marley and me as you can get, which to me is a great thing. So, what's the story? Well, basically I think the theme of the movie is about the, uh, the, the dog's kind of uh, uncomfortable relationship with humanity, the good and the bad. The basic story is that because of this, as it turns out, false story, but because of this concern about dog flu, uh, all of these dogs in this one particular Japanese city are exiled to a trash island. They're not allowed to hang out in society at all, so every dog owner has to give up their dogs. And then the most, the bulk of the narrative arc is how one 12 year old boy makes it to that island and he searches for his own personal lost dog with the help of other dogs. Now that sounds kind of snappy, but there's nothing uh, kind of sappy, but there's nothing sappy and emotional about this. It's just kind of a, it's like an adventure story and the dogs all uh, help. The dogs are, as I mentioned, it's a stop uh, motion animation film, or at least I think I mentioned that. And so all the dogs are little model dogs and uh, it, it's, they're, they're, it, they're, they're individualized uh, creatures, they all have their own personalities, but since the dogs relate to themselves rather than with their masters or with, with uh, mankind, they're allowed to have their own individuality, and I think that uh, gives the movie a real strength. Um, let me see, what else to, to say? Oh, but besides the, the basic story of this 12-year-old boy trying to find his dog, in a Wes Anderson movie, it's usually not the main story that makes it uh, fun. It's these little trifling sidebars and these sort of goofy detours that make the story uh, uh, a Wes Anderson mil uh, film. And it's that's exactly what it's the case here. There are all these little uh, weird things, like the dogs keep sort of randomly sneezing, which just seems sort of odd and out of place and uh, funny. We're a pack of scary, indestructible alpha dogs. <laughs> There's also this great madcap tour de force uh, sushi preparation scene that doesn't, you don't need that in the movie, but he, he does such a fun job with it, has so much fun with it that it's, uh, it, it gives you a kind of delight, even though it's irrelevant to the ma basic storyline. Uh, one of the great things about this movie, in addition to the great animation, is a great voice cast. You have Brian Cranston, Bill Murray, who's in a lot of Wes Anderson films. You've got Jeff Goldblum. Um, uh, Scarlett Johansson, Edward Norton is hilarious in this movie. This might not be everybody's cup of tea, but to me, it's easily one of the best movies of the year so far. All of my movie reviews are brought to you by Red Wind Casino. See them here first on the Cairo Radio Facebook page and find all of them at MyNorthwest.com.